Welcome to the NZ Board Store. Just thought I'd have a quick chat to you guys about wetsuits. It's pretty cold. That's why I put up a picture of us someone kite surfing in the sun. It's a bit nicer than what we've got at the moment. So it's a good time to start talking about wetsuits. You probably already have one. If you don't, this is what you should be thinking about. Um, we've got three of our different brands of wetsuits that we supply people. Um, we do have another couple of brands as well. These are just three of the main types of wetsuits we've got. I just want to talk about a couple of different features for each of them and what you might be looking for. Um, these are not specific to the brands, there's just different ideas within the wetsuit ranges and different thoughts and things you might be thinking of. Um, first of all, what might you want the wetsuit for? Obviously you want it to keep you warm, but uh, what purpose will you be using for the wetsuit? Will you be kite surfing with the wetsuit, windsurfing with the wetsuit, or just surfing with the wetsuit? Um, our wetsuits aren't really recommended for diving, so let's ignore that one for now. Uh, so, kite surfing and windsurfing do have different applications for wetsuits than surfing. They often get exposed into the water a little bit more and then pulled out of the water, and the the, uh, the cold water gets blown off them by the wind, and that makes uh, them a little it's a little bit colder than say if you were just surfing and it wasn't very windy. To be fair, uh, so a kite surfer may or may not decide to go for a slightly thicker wetsuit. Wetsuits typically come in different uh, millimetre thicknesses, uh, normally combined into two different types of uh, thickness for winter, uh, so that you can have a, a warmer, thicker area around your torso and a cooler area or a more flexible area around your arms. So that would often be a three two wetsuit, three millimetres and two millimetres, or a four three wetsuit, or even a five three or five four. Uh, the ones I've got today, are, I think they're all 4.3s, so uh, we'll just discuss a few different things about that. First of all, what might you want in a wetsuit? There's a couple of different options here. Um, so we've got front zip, uh, which is called different things in different manufacturers, and back zip, essentially, different things in different manufacturers as well. Back zip's pretty damn easy to get into, it's the traditional way of getting into your wetsuit, and front zip is kind of the newer way of getting into your wetsuit, um, and why would you want one or the other? This is easier to get into for certain but it does create a small issue where you do have a zip going down your back and that could get water into it and it's a place that won't be as flexible. Having the zip on the front of your wetsuit, a bit harder to get into, absolutely without a doubt. Some people don't like the feel of them so it's great to be able to try both of them on if you can. Getting into them is important, obviously getting out of them is harder than getting into them for the most part. And then the chest zip, why would you want the chest zip? You don't have a zip down the back of your wetsuit in that case and what that means for you is that you're probably going to have a fair bit more flexibility in the suit and potentially not a cold water entry area down through there, just through the top, so it's a bit of a smaller entry. Wetsuits in general, uh, for the most part, the ones that we'd sell you in the winter are going to be full steamer suits. And for the most part, most of our kite surfers through winter and windsurfers will wear a 4-3. Most of our surfers will only necessarily need to wear a 3-2. Uh, that's different for different people, so don't take that as gospel. Uh, and then the different types of suits and what they might do. So I'll just hang this O'Neill one back up here. There's an XL suit. Every, all these three brands, but all of them make really good suits. So rear zip. Generally the rear zip suits can come on some of the more entry level suits, but they also come on the more expensive ones as well. It's personal preference. What are you looking for in a rear zip? You want a big flap through the back there. Right, so it's more expensive to put that in, but it does make a huge difference to how much water can get in there. That big flap, that can just close up afterwards and uh, you won't get water down in your back. Then on the inside, what are you looking for? Looking for a nice bit of material over the chest, which is different to the regular neoprene. That's normally there to make it a bit warmer through that chest area. Other things you might be looking for, as you go further down into the suit, is these kinds of tapes. This type of thing right here. So you can see the stitching. That's called blind stitch. I'll explain that in just a second. And then there's taped over the areas of most stretch. Because as the stretches, and I'll, see, I'll see if I can do that for you slowly. As the stretches, you'll see, you, you just want that area to be quite strong. And then taping the seams, that's another way of stopping water coming through. So we'll go to the stitching. We'll just talk about the stitching really quickly. So the stitching you can see, hopefully you guys can see that stitching there. Right, that's called blind stitching. Blind stitching only stitches through half of the material. So it doesn't punch its way all the way through the fabric. And what that means is that water won't go all the way through the fabric. That'll be the difference between a, a really good suit and a really bad suit. Right? 
Blind stitching is really effective. It's been used for a long time in wetsuits. It's nothing new. Every good wetsuit should have it. On the other side of the blind stitch, they'll often put a tape. And that just really stops water getting through. Because you can still get some water seepage, but it'll be directly coming through if it's not blind stitched. Okay, further down into the wetsuit, what we're just looking for is some nice um, stretchy, stretchy rubber. Uh, nothing serious on the uh, cuffs or anything like that. Generally, we're looking for a bit of windskin on the front here. This is just to stop the water evaporating too fast and getting cold. And then down onto the knee pads here, um, just a little bit of wear for when you're either duck diving if you're surfing or just scraping things around when you're kite surfing or surfing. That's a pretty reasonable suit. Um, and a 4-3, that type of thing should keep you warm through even the coldest months when they're new. Wetsuits generally wear out after a little while, so um, that can... The, the rubber basically stops being as stretchy and that would make it uh, not as warm over a long period of time. So cover, let's call it three years. That kind of suit should set you back about $400. Anything cheaper than that um, is either a really good deal or not a really good deal for various reasons. Um, and uh, that type of thing would keep most people warm. That's what most people go to as their first suit. So I'll just put that one to the side for now. Billabong and O'Neill both do their suits in slightly different ways. This is just happens to be the Billabong one. Got a chest zip going through there. Pull that flat back that will go over your head right there. And then I'll just get rid of that. And then you're going down into another secondary flap through there. Right, why the flaps? Why the extra flaps? Just to stop the water going into your suit. Right, just keeps you a little bit warmer. So generally these suits are so uh, sealed off, you've only got five entry points through the neck, through each wrist, and through your legs. That you really, and there's going to be a little bit of water get in there, but not much at all. So you want to keep your uh, nature urges to yourself. Um, you don't really want to do that to a wetsuit. You want to keep it really nice and simple. Just, just let's see water in there, no other kind of water. Um, they smell really bad otherwise. Um, with the types of seam sealing you see on these types of suits, these are not stitched, these are seam welded. It's very stretchy, very secure, very uh, waterproof way of sealing up a wetsuit. You just have a closer look at that there. You won't get water in through the seams at all, right? And then simple chest zip, you might be getting in through the top there. Again, this is quite a high end suit, so if we look down further into it, it's a bit hard to get down in there. We'll see some nice material there, so that's nice and fluffy. It's designed to get the water off the coarse areas of your body and warm up really quickly. Wetsuits work by a very thin layer of water between your skin and the neoprene warming up quickly. This type of material gets that process done even faster. Okay, and will keep you nice and toasty and warm. Uh, unique features about something like that, it's just a little bit stretchier. The more you pay, the stretchier the wetsuit is, okay? That's what it comes down to, O'Neill. Big brand for us always have had them. They do a very similar chest zip. Uh, what are you expecting from that? These guys happen to do a waterproof zip through there. It's a bit harder to undo, but it's still very good stuff. So waterproof zip, again, they're trying to stop water entry when it's not wanted. Down through the top there, fully seam sealed on the inside and the outside of your suit. So you really, you're not seam taping, these are seam welds. There's not stitching here. right? And so what you're getting is a super warm suit Really flexible and uh, really easy to use. So that's kind of the basics of wetsuits. So I think I've covered a couple of things. I was going to go over just how you might get into one of these chest zips. Basically, you take it, turn it into trousers. Like so, I'm not going to get into it for you, but I'm just going to talk you through it. Turn it into trousers. Make sure the knee pads are at the front because if you don't forget, if you forget, the knee pads should go to the front. You'll get the suit around the wrong way, and you'll get to the end, and you'll be like, "Oops!" And you've got to get the whole thing undone again. Sometimes people use a plastic bag over their foot just to help their foot go through nice and easy. It's always a good idea. Put your trousers on, make sure your knee pads are stuck over your knees there. Pull it up over your waist and then put one arm all the way through. Forget, Don't forget, if you try and put both arms through, you don't get them both through, you're stuck in that suit until someone comes to help you. So get one arm all the way through, get the other arm all the way through, shrug it up over your shoulders, pull the flap over and you're done. So just a little bit of extra information for you guys. Uh, this... I think this month we're doing a bit of a promotion. Basically, you buy anyone any wetsuit off us at all, any wetsuit not already discounted, we're going to give you your choice, and I think you can do it really easily on our website, 
Your choice of either three mil O'Neill heat booties or the uh, reef shoes from O'Neill. So any wetsuit you buy off us, free pair of those guys. Uh, go onto a website, check it out. We should have all the sizes for you. All you have to do uh, is put in promo code. I can't remember what it is, but it'll be on the website really easily. Uh, select which wetsuit works for you. If you don't know, call us, use the contact us page, and then uh, select which pair of booties you want. They could be for you now, they could be for your mum, you never know. All right. Great one guys, any questions just uh, ask us down the questions below or hit us up on the phone at the NZ Ball Store. Have a great winter. I got my free booty.